Good morning. His name was Louis Avalos III. He was born in 1949, and he died in 1995. He was my oldest cousin. He looked a lot like his father and by familial association, like my own dad. I didn't know him well because of our nearly 20-year age difference, but I always thought he was so smart and cool, and he was always kind and funny in our interactions. His family nickname is Ergie because that's how Louis sounded to one of his little sisters, and it stuck because of its weirdness and cuteness. In turn, I heard Ergie as turkey, which, which made more sense to three-year-old me, but it was Ergie. He remains to all of us. I can't imagine how difficult it must have been for him in that time in, in, our, in his our particular Catholic, Mexican, male-dominated, sexually repressive, nothing progressive family to realize <laughs> that he was, he was gay. I do know that he dated some girls in high school to try to fit in and to fly under the radar. I do know that when he did come out to his mother and father that it did not go at all well for him. In the early 1970s, he moved from Toledo to Atlanta. It seems a little surprising to me now, but at that time, Atlanta was something of a mecca for young gay men and women where they didn't have to be so afraid and could find acceptance, friendship, work, as the Sun Belt was exploding then, and eventually love. My cousin found all of those things in time, and he blossomed. When I was about eight, we stopped in Atlanta for the night on the way to Miami to visit one of my sisters. Ergi and the young man who became his life partner put us up for the night. <clears throat> in a really nice apartment. I don't know the ins and outs of the conversation because it was mostly heard by eavesdropping as befits an eight-year-old and by an equally fitting lack of knowledge of the world. But I do know my dad asked if perhaps a rapprochement could be brokered between Ergi and his parents, but it was not yet the time to try for that. Several years later, when I was in high school, Ergi and his partner did visit Toledo and it still didn't go very well with his parents. But my parents had them over for dinner, and I remember the laughter that overrode the sadness, and that uh, Ergie and his partner both looked so together and so in love. Ready for romance teenage me definitely clocked that, and I was so happy for them both. I do believe he passed away before full acceptance was given by my aunt and uncle, so this first part is something of a eulogy for my cousin. I didn't get to know him well enough, but I hope he knew that he was loved and that Louis, Ergi, or Turkey, I was still thought about and missed. The takeaway for me was that my mom and dad were much more able to be loving and accepting toward their nephew than his own parents were. My mom was also more open to learning about how sexuality was on a spectrum and differently expressed by people. She and I talked about her favorite player, tennis player of the day, Billie Jean King, and why she should not have been so controversial. Around that time, my mom read and then let me read Christine Jorgensen, A Personal Autobiography. I remember my mom saying that it was difficult for her to understand how people, how people would feel so different <clears throat> about their gender assignment, but she thought that it was absolutely horrible that they would be ostracized, ridiculed, not allowed in certain settings, and sometimes beaten or killed because of something that wasn't their fault. These teachings by modeling on sexuality ran so counter to some of the ways my parents were. Again, very Catholic, sort of macho male, uh, patriarchy, learn it, live it, love it. <laughs> my, my dad would... Uh, would get would complain about it when my mom would get in one of one of what he deemed her women's lib moods. So she did not do that often around him. He finally allowed her to get a job when a part time job when I was in middle school. <clears throat> um, a, a, a job outside the home when I was in middle school. 
my mom dressed up one time as a businessman to take me trick or treating one year. One of Dad's suits, his uh, a tie, his pair of dress shoes with paper stuffed in the toes, her hair pinned up under his fedora. I remember him joking, "I don't know if I should kiss you," but he did. <laughs> I do sometimes wonder if they would have, how they would have been, if if they would have been as accepting if one of their own daughters had been uh, LGBTQIA on the on the end of the spectrum, but. Given what I saw with my eyes and heard with my ears growing up, I'd like to think that they would realize that we are all somewhere on the spectrum of life and love, and that love is energy, love is love, and that love ultimately begets more love. Thank you.